Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my series on how to sing like. Next up is how to sing like ACDC. Now we know there's two facets to ACDC. There's Bon Scott era and Brian Johnson era. We're actually gonna cover both of them today. Uh, but if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. That'd be really cool, appreciate that. Uh, don't forget to ring the bell so I can keep cool videos coming your way. And I have a singing course, and the singing course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com and I have a free singing forum there for all of you guys that want to learn how to sing, whether you're an intermediate singer or an advanced singer. Uh, it's all in there. There's 20,000 people in there talking about how to get great at singing like this. So um, now I'm going to start with a montage that I did of Brian and we're going to go through it systematically and discuss it. Uh, the other thing is, is I'm going to show Katie, one of my students, that um, we did some ACDC. Now I did a couple, a couple uh, ACDC tunes and one of them got pulled, Shoot to Throw got pulled, and she did an awesome job. I wish I could you know, show you that. Now, if you really wanna check it out, you can go to my Facebook page, uh, my fan, fan page of Facebook, um, and look under videos, and you can see, I was able to post on Facebook, but YouTube pulled it down, unfortunately, so um, that's a bummer. At any rate, so I don't wanna do that because I don't wanna get this video pulled down, so I can only do things that I'm allowed to use or that they get, sort of <laughs> give you permission to use. So let's get started. Now, again, two phases of ACDC, the Bon Scott era and the Brian Johnson era. I'm going to start with Brian Johnson and I want to point out one more thing. Again, I keep saying this quote. I'm going to quote it again. Einstein says that a demonstration, in order to demonstrate something, it's the only way to teach. Okay? So he said, Einstein said that demonstration isn't a way to teach. It's the only way to teach. So I'm doing this because I want you guys to see there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of information, you know, crazy, unverifiable information floating around on YouTube. And the only way you can tell if information you're getting is legit is can that individual actually demonstrate it for you? I don't mean a, uh, 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 you know, some little trick or whatever, you know, here we go, you know, whatever thing that they give you. I mean, physically, have them sing whole songs and showcase their students singing whole songs because it's the only way you guys are gonna know truly how, how to get to this stuff. And I know I keep hammering that home, but I've gotta hammer it more because the more vocal coaches that pop up on the internet, it's like, how do you know who to choose? Like, where do you go? There's a lot of fast talkers out there and there's a lot of guys claiming and, and promising you guys a lot of stuff that they can't deliver. And uh, so I'm delivering for you now. So let's do this, here we go. Let's talk about it after like we always do. Okay, so I wanna stop there. So now, Brian uses a lot of head voice, okay? A lot of head voice. Bond did too in a different kind of way. Brian's singing was a lot more balls out and a lot more, you know, thrusty than Bond. Bond was a lot more naturally gifted in some ways in, in the way he presented his high range stuff and he was a lot more laid back in it. So, and I'm gonna explain that too as we go, but let's do this together. So, so if you're in falsetto, your falsetto register, and if you've worked up your falsetto, and I cover all of this in my singing course, where you build your falsetto register to match the tonal qualities of your chest voice, okay? So it sounds like you're belting or pulling chest up really high when you're not. So you're going, be black! So let me, let me back this up and let's do this together, okay? So I want to I wanna go to the top and I want to do this a line at a time. A little medley and talk about a long-standing career that we got. And they're still out there doing it. So we're going to do it first, talk about it after like we always do. Let's do it together. Back and back, hit the sack, right? Just do that a bunch of times and strengthen your falsetto. Back and back, hit the sack. Belong, I'm glad to be back, right? Now, right there, you've got to cross over into your chest and just give me a little chest. Belong, I'm glad to be back, right? Now, if you notice, I've worked my chest and head voice up so well that you can't hear my register break, but I'm coming out of falsetto and I'm going through my passaggio into my BAM! I'm glad to be back! Right? You can't hear me go into my chest voice. Okay? That's very, very important. So there's this toggling between chest and head and chest and head. So he's not going BAM! Black! 
he's not just blood curdling, screaming out these notes in his chest voice and pulling chest up that high. Now, actually though, I did do that on Painkiller. When I did uh, How to Sing Like Rob Halford, I don't think I've done him one of those yet, but I'll try to get to that. Um, I did for fun, I sang Painkiller end to end. It's actually on YouTube, you can Google it or YouTube it. Uh, where I sang a lot of it in a belted chest resonant because Rob does almost all of it in head voice. And I thought it'd be cool to kind of muscle it up through to, to kind of say, hey, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Or I don't want to see someone else try to pull that off. Um, and so I, I was kind of like, <laughs> kind of rubbing it in people's faces of how high I could pull my chest voice and sustain that sound. In this case though, that wouldn't have been true to the sound. So let's continue, here we go. It's all head voice. Right, and I'm leaning into it for with a little distortion, right? That's a little mixed voice. Back, 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 back. Right. So again, I'm I'm going back and forth between chest and head, and chest and head, and I'm kind of sliding through that passage. You don't really notice I'm getting through it. Okay. Next one. Here we go. I'm kind of using a Lane Staley approach. I, in fact, I just did uh, Alice in Chains, I just did Man in a Box, and I'm using that same kind of grindy tone. Now, Bond was like the first guy to really do this, and then Brian came later and emulated that sound and, and made it more Brian Johnson. But, ah, 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 yeah but he uses that really hyper compressed sound in his throat. Now, this can be really dangerous. I want you guys to do yourself a favor. I want, one of their coolest concerts that I've ever seen with Brian involved is Live from River Plate. Amazing show. In fact, I, I got to live in Argentina for a while and I've got to see <laughs> soccer matches there. Wow, it was a crazy. In fact, uh, that exact arena, quick, quick story, side story on that. My, my son was playing for a, a team in the south of Argentina called Aldo Civi. He was um, in the Primavera division and he was training with Aldo Civi. It's one of their soccer teams, a division two team. It might be division three, division two team, who cares? Anyway, and so um, and so we actually went with a guy named Pablo Tissera, who was a striker for one of the teams also um, up around the Buenos, uh, Buenos Aires area. And uh, so we went to River Plate to see the big River Plate, you know, uh, uh, Boca Junior game and they're big, big rivals and especially back then. Um, and so <laughs> the way it worked was they're such gnarly rivals that whatever home team it is, so in this case it was River Plate, um, and they're playing against Boca Junior, Boca Junior was the visiting team. So what they would do is after the soccer match, they would lock in the River Plate fans where they weren't allowed to leave until Boca Junior fans could run for their lives, I kid you not. And then they would open up the gates like, like you know, the bull coming out of the, you know, the pit, right? And then they would just chase these guys to from here to kingdom come and bad stuff would happen, unfortunately. So we're at this game, the soccer match, in River Plate Stadium, that's what brings back memories. Um, and and River Plate was winning, and River Plate was up 1-0 and won 1-0. One, well, so what does Boca do? Boca lights the stadium on fire. I kid you not. They're ripping out the seats. They're lighting, and there's this whole section, and they 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 uh, you know marshaled off this whole section where they have two huge you know, columns where there's nobody, no seats at all, so that the River Plate guys can't throw things at Boca, Boca can't throw things at River Plate. So those are sectioned off. But so there's a whole Boca section and they're ripping up chairs and throwing them on the field and lighting things up. And the stadium is on fire and they lock us in and release them to run for their lives. And we're locked in for like 25 minutes as the stadium's on fire. And then finally, when they open the doors, I mean, it's just a stampede to get the hell out of that place. Like, wow, I go, I will never do that again. The soccer match was cool, but I think the fanaticism of the event was a little crazy. So this is the stadium that, that um, ACDC played at. So when you go see it, you can have a backdrop of that as you go see the show. So back, sorry, back to Brian Johnson. So Brian, uh, you know, as he comes out, after a few songs, he gets so locked down in his larynx that he's in the and you can actually hear the larynx raising like Kermit the Frog and getting stuck. And you can even hear the digastric muscle. You can almost see it come down under, under his chin where he gets stuck so bad and he just, he's just giving it everything he's got. That's why he walks on singing like this, right? Because it's just so locked down in his throat. So what does he do? He waits, 
He has the audience sing a chorus or verse or whatever. He waits until it starts to relax and then he can come down and he kind of sing another line or two and then he gets stuck again and, and so forth. That's why you see this happen with a lot of guys. So in my singing course, I cover this. I say, don't do that, guys. There's ways to get up into that sound by training the voice to relax and using the diaphragm to do all of the work for us to relax the chest, neck, and throat to get in and out of these different styles. Again, I cover this in my singing course. And so in this case, in where it's unavoidable, you've got to be able to pull some chest into the sound to get this kind of sound. Because I've heard a lot of people do a lot of ACDC and they try to pull their head voice way down into their chest register and then there's no belting power in the upper mid voice. So it sounds very inauthentic and very wimpy. So you've got to be able to have this interchange, this exchange back and forth between chest and head. All right, a long-winded thing, but it, I think it was, it was worth, worth your time. Hopefully. <laughs> Now that's all chest. You been thunderstruck, right? That's all chest. So you have to do that. You can't go. You been thunderstruck, right? You can have a mix of that. You been. So I can mix a little bit of that. That was actually a mix. That wasn't only chest voice. And I can go back and forth. And again, I cover that in my course where you can make some chest and head. So if you feel like you're getting that that tug where you're getting caught and locked down like Brian, you can actually roll into head voice and relax this and go back and forth kind of like Robert Halford does in a lot of his stuff when he predominantly uses mostly head voice, okay? And Bruce Dickinson does it too. You know, run to the, run for right he's actually in head voice and then kind of comes back into chest and has really great command of his mixed voice so anyway now this is a lot of chest coming up check it out she was a fast machine she kept a So that's all chest. She had silent eyes telling me no lies. Now get me out. Right, so that's all a chest sound. I'm pulling up chest, right? But now I go and get it more than a shaft, right? In certain parts, I'll go into head voice to relax the chest, uh, you know, throat and the chest voice. And then I'll go back and forth really quickly just to buy me enough time for that to relax so I don't get caught to where I can't, it, it inhibits me from being able to go up and sing higher, okay? So here we go. Now get me out with those was head voice. 50-50, mixed head. And we were, right there, and we were making it in you, we were. That was like almost all head with a more like, like 70% head with like you know 30% chest in a mixed voice. So let me back this up. Listen really closely to the nuances of these so you can tell when I'm I'm switching back and forth between the two, right? So I did this a few times throughout the process of this. You didn't know it because my head voice matches the tonal qualities of my chest voice and I can get in and out of mix doing this. So Like I'm, I'm a lot in head voice there, though there is some chest mix in the sound, but I'm not pulling chest through the whole thing. You can hear me, you can hear me relax the chest. You can hear I'm not, it's not, you don't hear the strain of the chest up there going, gosh, that Ken Templin guy has a lot of range. Well, my range is predicated or based on my ability to employ and use my head voice back and forth like this. Yes, I can pull chest up there high like that. I do it all the time. But for the most part, if I'm playing safe on it and I'm doing vocal demonstrations, I've got to pace myself and know I got to, like, I got to finish the song with style. I can't just keep doing that and then, you know, duck notes like you hear singers duck notes all the time. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna put this in the description so you guys can check out my version. Now, I wanna kinda move on. Now, there's, um, I'm gonna show you Katie's version. Now, again, I wish I could do Shoot to Thrill. Again, go to my Facebook to see Shoot to Thrill. But this is cool because this is Whole lot of Rosie and she does a great Bon Scott though. She Katie's it up a bit. Now, she adds a little bit of Lizzie Hale in it because she loves Lizzie, but check it out. And she's fun to watch. Wanna tell you a story about a woman I know. 
Now, if Bond was doing it, he'd be really laid back. I wanna tell you a story about a woman I know. She ain't exactly pretty, but she steals the show. You know, right? So he's like really, really laid back on it. And that was his style, very different than that. So, you know, when you hear, uh, you know, Highwood Hell and stuff like that, that's a different approach than, than Brian. Brian's way more, you know, again, more thrusty on the sound compared to Bond. He was, Bond, Bond kind of fit the band better, actually, as far as that kind of sound for that style. Though Brian certainly came into his own and did a lot of great stuff. I'm just pointing out that, that, that he was way more laid back on the sound. So, so Katie's gonna kind of do a little bit of both. Check it out. And it comes to loving. Ooh, she steals the show. She exactly pretty. She exactly small. 42, 39, 56. You could say she's got it all. That she did it more like, you can say, you know, Bond would you can say, she's got it all. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'd be way more compressed and way smaller on this sound than Katie. Katie's like throwing down like Lizzie would if she were to do the song, okay? Again, I'll put these in the description. This is really fun to watch. Katie just did a great. She's so animated. She's just a really fun person to teach and hang out with. And 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 she really works on her craft, guys. I'm telling you, man, this girl has come great in two years. She has completely revolutionized and transformed her voice. Not just to sing this stuff, to sing heart ballads, to sing, you to sing Steel Heart, to sing, you know, Led Zeppelin, you name it. In fact, we just had a um, a breakaway on one of her tunes. We did Black Dog. You can check out the YouTube version. But she in three days got three million views of Black Dog on Facebook, just like that. And that's how this stuff happens. I mean, it kind of clicks with certain audiences at a certain time, and people get it. So um, anyway, I'm we're, and we're going to go farther. I mean, she's got a lot of work still left to do, but it's really encouraging to see my students, um, you know, pro, uh, progress like this and get great. So another one you guys may or may not remember this, but Gabriela Gunchikova. I'm just going to do a small little snippet of this, but you're getting to hear different students do it again. Demonstration isn't a way to teach. It's the only way to teach. The way to prove that what I'm telling you is true. Now check out Gabrielle. Here we go. Okay, so anyway, gang, thank you for joining me. If you guys want to uh, have me do a how to sing like so-and-so, please put it in the description and check out my next video.